Watch the seven car get up on its side. Look at that. That is wild. I thought I saw that. Wow. Unbelievable. One car riding on the wall on the driver's side door, the full length of this short straightaway past the start finish line. All we could see is the bottom of the car up against the safer barrier. You all right, man? Yeah. Do we cross the start finish line? Yes. Stacking them deep, selling them cheap. It tastes like gasoline, rubber, and victory. We're just out here stacking pennies. Welcome to Stacking Pennies, guys. Corey Joy here. Uh, finish of the Geico 400 on my roof. Um, wild race, wild finish. We're going to break all things down. Talladega with my buddy Ryan Flores, front tire changer. Ryan Blaney's Ford Mustang. How's it going? That was good. You had an exciting weekend. So let's just, before we get into uh, Sunday, let's break down your your modified debut at Bowman Gray Stadium oh, on man, Saturday that, night. That was fun. We went up there. They practiced Friday. We broke a motor. Mm -hmm. drove, drove for uh, David and Derek Hill, Hillbilly Racing, mm -hmm. which you've, like we talked about last week. You've driven for them before. And we broke a motor, so we took our time, fixed it all day Friday, had another motor come in. Um, and it was fun just to get to hang out with the guys, kind of go back racing. You know, it was we weren't worried. We weren't worried about anything else other than just racing. So watched it on watched it on flow on Saturday night. Did a good job. Finished sixth. Finished sixth. Just kind of um, hung out first two hundred. But like even trying to hang out there, it gets a bad rip. I think people talk about like the wrecks and all that. But what what I learned is that a lot of the problems come from um, the nerf bars. Like you don't line up perfect, and then you get up over top of them and spin out. Uh, and you, it's tough to really tough to pass under green, but yeah, Saturday. 17,000 people sold out. Dude, so we went there, practiced, did well, qualified, because um, we didn't get to qualify on Friday. So you can kind of, it's like Indy where you can re-qualify. So we started 12th. Um, and then, yeah, you walk out there for the race, and I was like, it looked like the Roman Coliseum. Oh, yeah. Like, it was sick. It's sick. Um, it was packed. And then. Do you think that they can get with the time zone and actually have some timing and scoring? See, like, I. The only reason I think that it would be better is for the uh, the first Accuracy. race, the sportsman race. I guess it was the first race. Yeah, uh, where they finish finish. photo finish, and it's like there there can be some discrepancy. So it's like, uh, what happened there? Um, but also, like, there's some of it that I just wouldn't touch because, as much as everybody says it's screwed up, if they fixed it on the like, they would just bitch about NASCAR fixing it. Like, like it's like it's everything you want racing to be, and then they're like, well, we can fix this, this, and that. Well, wait a minute. Yeah, On well, the cup side, you, it is fixed, and everybody complains about that. And then you go to Bowman Gray, and, they, like, so no matter what you do, um, you're always going to have, the, like, the racing people complain about it, but what they're obviously doing something right because you could barely find parking, you could barely get in, and it was an awesome event. I was going to so. text you to bring me some fried Oreos. I never today. even got in the grandstands because mm -hmm. it was just so packed. And then even after the race, I hung out after the race. A lot of people came down. Had a lot of uh, people give me a penny. Don't they? Uh, don't they open the gate? So if you bought a grandstand ticket after the race, you can come down and hang out and get come autographs down, and yep. t-shirts. Sign a couple autographs. Uh, talk to a bunch of people. Listen to the podcast. And it was just, it's you know, we do this stuff every week on the highest level with NASCAR. So it's nice to go back uh, to the roots and and um, just compete and. Remind, remind yourself why you started doing this. And it had, I had such a blast. I'll do it again this year. We'll go run a couple more races. Over well, <clears throat> so that looked like a good time. There was one instance that was pretty impressive. You were able to knock somebody's air cleaner off with your right front tire. Yeah, but never to be. I did. I got up over top of uh, some fella. Some fella uh, knocked his air cleaner off. and landed like, oh, just right before the pit gate. And I went and then I plowed it down on the one. And I was like, oh, that was dumb. I didn't even know if the right front was bent or not. But it didn't even knock the toe out. Like the wheel was still straight. So. That guy's that guy's air cleaner was not straight anymore. No, it knocked the. Well, off. I said to Derek, I said to, to David, I said, uh, "Is he still going?" He goes, "I believe you knocked his carburetor off, Ryan. I don't think he's going anymore." <laughs> uh, but That's they, true. yeah, they had good bolts in our in our car. That thing stayed together, and they like said at the end we were able to scrap together. I, I would love to get a top five, but just a little bit too tight. Um, I think if we go there and work on that thing for a couple of weeks, we can win one of them races. That'd be sweet. So I don't think they'd like them northern fellas coming down here. The Yankees beating. Them. I've been here half my life. I'm kind of a hybrid at this point. I'm not like a full. I'm not like Teddy Christopher coming down. 
That's you know, true. Like, like I'm not like or a, even Ryan Priest. He's born, he's got some Yankee in him. Yeah, for sure. But not to be outdone, I get airborne and you say, "Hey, hold my hey, beer, hold watch my, this." Hold my Celsius. Let me go knock somebody's air cleaner off too at 200 miles an hour. It was scary watching because, like, you kind of. I wasn't watching the TV; I was watching live, and then I just saw you get up on your side next to the fence, and then you went out of view, and I was like, "Man, I hope he didn't get in the catch fence." So I didn't see that's, anything. That's the first thing I thought um, because. So rewind, um, and we'll start. Let's not start from the very beginning. Let's just start with the last lap, because uh, I've watched it back like two more than that, four or five times. Like I was slowed down somewhat to like miss just the absolute smush of cars, um, and the five was in front of me, and I'm kind of woed down, and I get like pushed into it and just wedged um then i go back look, look at smt and the 41 and the 77 have not lifted yet so it's like oh oh you i i literally just got pushed into and then just i don't know flipped over um which kind of sucks because that is the way speed racing has turned into it's this fuel saving uh, like we can get into that in a minute but back up to the wreck so you're going and you just are lined up like a cow going to the slaughter because you know you're gonna crash you know that whatever car is in front of you is probably gonna see a little bit of puff of smoke and then smash following the five here and then you just kind of lifting kind of, i think i'm in a good shape here then sh -pow -pow, smash well, you were going to be fine, but yeah, like you said... You got cars coming in 30 miles an hour faster You got you. pushed from your driver's side door into the wreck. Yep. And there's nothing you can do there. So the, 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 it wasn't really scary. You're up like, okay, I don't really know where I'm at. When I was up on my left side, the right front wheel of the 77 came right in my windshield. And I was like, oh boy. Oh, it, that was that was the left front. That was the 77. Yeah, yeah. So there, there was a wheel spinning like right here in front of my face like oh my goodness um oh ouch um mm. oh my is that goodness. you yes maybe you haven't lifted yet <laughs> yeah apparently not there's oh. grip on the wall there's grip on the wall <laughs> <laughs> like the the rule is you aim right for them that is wild holy mackerel i didn't see the one out of the two's windshield see as Hang on, guys. I got to get a top 20. I'm in the money. <laughs> as crazy as everything is, right, like, it's, like, right there, yeah, where the tires and that. That was sketchy. So then right here, you slide on your, your – you're all up against the left side of the seat, right? Bam. That one hurt bad. So I'm glad at that last one where it just all landed on the stops. Fuck out. That's the – Dude. Shoots through well, the Well, the first one – so you're, you're hanging by your – essentially, you feel the weight on your lap belt and your pelvis. So you're sitting there upside down slide on your left side door and then when it goes to the roof your everything went up like Ugh! and then you know it's coming and you're just waiting for like the pow and it knocked the wind out of me if you and end I up on your these. left side if you end up on your left side and the car's on fire how yeah i was thinking out? about that for a second how do you get out um yeah you're looking you're like you're watching, not going you're watching hatch. the you're watching the asphalt like slide by your window net and you're thinking like man i hope this thing doesn't catch on fire yeah and it's sliding, slowing down a little bit, and then I'm like, okay, maybe if this thing ends up on its roof, I'll get out of the out of the window net. But if it ends up on the left side, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, you don't want to get a roof hatch at that point because then it the might car roll back over on you. Yeah, yeah, that would suck bad too. Uh, and all those little like glimpses of thoughts, like bam, bam, bam. But a lot of the times, the decisions are made for you in life, and it rolled back on all fours. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I the cars out it wasn't are on fire. the cars are built to take impact pretty much any way, but the worst one is when it comes down on all four. Oh my goodness! Because it's just straight chassis, and it just absorbs through you through your spine. Uh, yeah, my spine absorbed today. It's pretty sore. Um, my neck, my like high to mid back. Um, but I'll get that worked on today, and I'll be good to go for the monster this weekend. Uh. Eric Jones, I guess there that was uh, he had a massive, massive crash. Um, so the Toyotas they knew that they were going to be short on fuel, so they lined up and, and short pitted everybody trying to leapfrog. Yeah. I don't know what they were doing here. The, there's a big bump over the tunnel, oh. pushing on the opposite side of the racetrack. 
Yeah, it looked like the uh, it, looked, it looked like the forty two is a little aggressive with the push. Is that two. what it seemed like to you? Well, you're you're aggressive with the push, but I think the bumps there in a turn three, cars light, it's really bumpy. The cars are super harsh. And he's on the 23, 43, 23 gets 43 sideways, and then just, dude, piled. I, I, I drove by under caution, and I was like, oh, my God. I've never seen a car that flat before. Uh, so they, they took him to the hospital. I, I, gosh, that's a big lick, dude. Mm, Danny. How frustrated is Danny? Like, just like, what, what are, are we, we doing? doing? What are we doing? Yeah, we just we just flipped this. What? I, that's got to be a weird Toyota meeting this week. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, They're going to have to let John Hunter lead the line from now on. You lead. We'll push you. I don't even know if he's going to be invited to. I don't know. Well, like I, but like you said, is it his fault? He's not on him. He's not on him. No. Okay. Well, but did it set it up to where you're going too fast down the backstretch? No. Like Whatever I, it was. I don't know. It's not as hard as they made it. You really can can you play it. that one more time? He's not on him at all. No, we're gonna clear we're, John Hunter's name out of gonna, this. Yeah, let's let's clear let's clear the forty two's name here. Here we go. Got him a little sideways well, he there early. He yeah, did. he lifted. Uh, that wasn't the forty two's fault. Not sure whose fault was it. We gotta go sift through SMT. Nonetheless, they piled some stuff up there, just racing around by themselves. So what I just saw there brings what? me to our next point. What? Water on the apron still. Yeah, um, which NASCAR is in a. a tough predicament there you got to go we got to go racing the yeah. track itself is dry uh it rained like a bear on saturday night all the way up until about 10 30 in the morning really uh like uh, like heavy rain now you were in front of most of these guys before you pitted right yeah did you just have i don't know why we took so much fuel i guess or oh, we okay. needed it i'm not okay. sure okay copy um well, and there's some water patches that I oh. didn't know were there because I'm just kind of driving off the three car, and that thing lit the wick and spun the tires before I even knew what happened. Um, I was like, uh, what happened? It's just there, in that guys? right. It's just it's in right that there. crevice. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I wish I had an idea. Oh, yeah, if you would have wrapped the line. Oh, you got both tires in it. That's why you spun out. Yeah. The nine still had left rear. Uh, yeah, so just little things like that can change the outcome of your day. Let's, but hear, let's hear the RPM. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What was that? <sighs> oh, well, I mean, that, that stinks because it puts you behind. And any with Speedway Racing now, you can't lose any track position. No. Um, so let's go ahead and break that down because that's the uh, that seems to be the conversation topic of what Speedway Racing has turned into is – the engineers and the OEMs now have studied it, and they have figured out what is the most uh, efficient and the best strategy to put your car up front when stage points are awarded and the end of the race track position. And when you have 40 teams worth of smart engineers that really only care, they don't care about how good the racing is. They don't care about they don't get paid leave to care changes. About that. They don't get paid to do that, care about that. That's not their job. What a what an engineer gets paid to do is to dominate the race and make it as boring as possible. Yes. Like that's your job. If you're a race engineer, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Because you get paid race bonuses. You're not worried about it. And, and there and there is, you know, we get I don't know the percentage of information being a non key partner team. We get enough to be like, okay, this is how exactly the race is going to play out. This is exactly how much fuel you have to save. Normally on my dash, they put the lap times. So if you're a short track, you can just look at your lap times. If you start trying some different stuff, you can see if there was decent speed. Here they took that off and put th throttle percentage. And Whoa. literally told me, hey, uh, no more than 45% throttle here. And you just hold your foot at 45% throttle. You keep the gap close to you. If, if the accordion kind of opens up, then you go to like 50, and then you close the gap to not let anybody in there. But they say, all right, we need 40% here. All right, Golly. we need 50%. When did that start? This time last year? Yeah. Because I feel like with us, we had the strategy, this last Talladega race, kind of perfect, uh, where we kind of sat back and then ended up winning the race with our fuel strategy. And then I think everybody had the same strategy this time. Yeah. yeah everybody everybody knows. Hey, the... the and in our radio, we were talking about it. The average running position for the people that, that won the stages was 20th, the entire yeah. first half of the run. I don't know what needs to happen. 
Um, I'm also on the side of we don't need to keep moving the goalposts, but we do need to make the sport um, turn it away from like we we definitely don't need a fuel mileage race like we did to yeah, drop the green. You made a great point when we talked yesterday, right? The everybody's so good. The teams are so good. The drivers are so good that we all figure. And Denny said it, I think, on his podcast last week or after Martinsville, um, that everybody drives the cars exactly the same because there's they, everybody's figured out the best strategy, the best ways to drive the car, the best way to set it up. So everybody goes the same speed. Yeah. And it makes it like like F1's the same way. Yeah. Right. That's why there's not much parity in F1. The same guys finish up front all the yep. time. Um, I I don't know. I I listening to some other people that are way smarter than me the there's they're trying to go to like a single engine to where you don't have a super speedway motor like it's the same motor all the time mm. um but i think f- like just from a picture guy looking at what if we got rid of stages what if we had more stages what if we had four to break it up like i think that that yeah. our gas man said that in miller race he said they need to have an extra stage in here so you can just run hard all the time yeah and Maybe. then you know but even at that right if you run hard all the time it's still in the third be stage if you're just going to come in and do fuel only right you'll still hang out and be able to leapfrog it doesn't matter if there's 40 stages if there's a stage every 10 laps there's going to be it's going to everybody's going to figure out what the ideal strategy is and then everybody's going to do that in two races that's yeah. just what it is now you just don't but the, i don't like, know what the fix is. i think another problem is it's not all ideal, race though. long when you before when you guys were running uh, super speedways, you would be working on runs and figuring it out, yeah. right? Right. Just like Brad did with the thirty four, kind yep. of four laps to go, he figured out. So I got to ride in the ambulance with Mike Dolan and it had the whole thing broken down. It was pretty cool. With to who? To, uh, McDowell. Oh yeah, did he, he had it all. Broken there was down? legitimately seven of us piled in the ambulance back to the back to the infield care center. Um, so I, everybody's getting out, right? Everybody's getting out, and we walk to the and the ambulance driver's like, we got room for two. And everybody's like, no, no, no. We're all going in this thing. We all want to get out of Talladega. So seven of us pile in there. I, I pop my head in. I'm in there first. Well, I thought I was in there first of the group, but McDowell and Cody Ware were already in there. And then it was Priest and Briscoe. And Cody Ware was racing? Oh, yeah, he was in there. What race was it? What car was he in? He, uh, 15, 15, I think. Okay. Um, and a couple more. Um, it was just a party in there. And McDowell said, well, how about that master class of controlling the lines? I said, that was pretty good. Because when they dropped the rag with like 27 Wait, he called it a master class? It was a master class up until the last lap. Um, Because there was no chance. I was like, there's no way he's going to be able to block both lanes like he's doing right now without absolutely getting trashed. I thought it was going to happen like 25 laps earlier, to be honest. There's no bigger wreck. I don't know if it's coincidence or not, but there's no bigger wrecks at Speedways right now than the ones that happen off the bumper of the six car. He was behind me one time, pushing me when we were in the third lane, and I'm like, I don't know if this is the position that I want to be in. Because uh, Bradley has a pretty good record of um, not helping the guy in front of him, <laughs> uh, really helping him go sideways and not really forward. So uh, he got off my bumper, but then eventually put himself in position to win the race. So the play the tape uh, of the last lap. So McDowell said that the six – pushed him way out there and it was a cat and mouse game of, of trail breaking and trying to close the gap um, so as you see the, there's obviously a ton of carnage there but big block to the third lane came back down he said he was fully 10, 10 out of 10 committed on the blocks and just sits it on the left rear yeah because Brad it didn't look like Brad got into him well no because it just it tank slapped it tank slapped he, yeah you know you're looking in your mirror and then you kind of overcompensate how much you're going to the left there um, because you're going full sweep to the right, back to the left, looking in the mirror. Okay, where's he at? I'm full committed. Clear. Uh, he just yeah, came down too fast. Is that came back too fast uh, and, and almost overshot it, right, to where um, it just sat back on the left rear with some wheel angle. Um, you're dealing with Russ Wheeler there. Oh, your teammate, old Russ Wheeler, just drove right beside you and flipped you upside down from that angle. I, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what it was. But, you know, it, it could have been anybody, people, anybody that you just know that's committed to staying in the gas, uh, coming to the checkered. It's not 
ideal, <laughs> but unfortunately that's just like the, the, the rules of engagement right now. You cross the white, you reach up and you give the belt a little tuggy tuggy to make sure, uh, when you get in the crash, you don't move around a whole lot. I'm glad I did. <laughs> Legitimately, we crossed the white. I looked up, the flag was waving. And I was like, okay, here we go. <laughs> Um, and still felt like I flopped around like a rag doll in there. Yeah. Um, then but Tyler Reddick punches through. I thought that, that was, thing, that car is sick. Like that's my, that's dude, what, like the white and the black and chrome. Dude, that killer whale look dialed. Oh yeah. This week, they they dropped that scheme, and I'm like, ooh, that thing's gonna be tough to beat. You know, sometimes cars just look fast. Cool was two pit stalls down from us was the 45. Yeah. And MJ was out there like he was the tire guy. Like yeah. jumping around with I all the picker guys, like hugging all the picker guys. Like he was just, he looked like he was just on the team. And then he was holding Bo. And like it was, it was really cool. I was like, saw those. Um, he stayed out. They stayed out in the pit box celebrating for like 10 minutes. Yeah. Meanwhile, and then they were like, then they all kind of looked at each other. My, I'm watching my car being winched up the flatbed. And he's yeah. out there doing donuts. I'm like, this is great. Well, then they were like, they all kind of looked at you like, where do we go now? All right, victory lane, let's yeah, go. Yeah, let's go. Um, how cool it is, though. I mean, MJ is probably the most recognizable person in the entire world, right? For Top three. One of them, yeah. I mean, if there's a list of five his people. His brand is maybe one of the most, like his No, if you if you, asked, too. if you ask the majority of people in the world, give a top five people of most recognizable, MJ is in that list for the majority of them. And he's out here in Talladega, Alabama, jumping around holding Tyler Reddick's little kid. Yeah. Uh, that is freaking awesome. There was a lot of people there yesterday. Famous fails? There was like the Alabama basketball team was there talking to him beforehand. The oh, yeah? Alabama football players, a lot of barstool people. My Talladega's wife, a spot to be, man. My Seems. wife was really into it. I guess there were some vloggers there or something. I don't know. Mm. It just looked like, you know when you kind of stand up at road and you're to kind of tell who's like who was, famous uh, and who's not? Who's that, that famous fella from, from the hills or – who Alex Weaver's engaged to? He was there. Yeah. Spencer something. His name is Steven Spencer. Yeah. I think it's Spencer. Yeah. Y'all know? Is it Spencer? Um, but anyway. It's a yeah, nice look. That's a, that's a good looking man. Not yeah. going to lie. Steven Coletti. Is that what his name? Yep. I think it's Spencer. Okay. Well, that's good. Just change the man's name <laughs> if you want. Sorry, Alex, about your boyfriend's name. No, fiance's Steven. name. It's a good looking fella. I'll um, give that. She did good. But yeah, no, it was a lot of hype. And like people were like, man, these fans gotta hate this race and i said these they don't care these for the guys race, don't dude. care they are here they talladega is like oh yeah there's a race too yes no no it's legitimately it's like mardi gras with just encapsulated by a 2.66 mile racetrack and there just happens to be loud noises every now and then and you can be like yeah and then you get back to drinking listen That's if that, as doing. long as long as that dang Big old truck comes yes. with the American flag. You sons of bitches can run around half throttle all you want. <laughs> <laughs> give me liberty give me the and pre, give me that damn give me the Peter pre -race. Bill. There's two things they want. Pre-race and a wreck coming to the checkered. You guys <laughs> check both the boxes. <laughs> Everybody's going to forget what's in the middle. That's that's <laughs> yeah. 100% true. Yeah, that's what it is. So Give me liberty and give me the Peter Bill, ladies and gentlemen. We're uh, going speaking on the of, over. Speaking of old glory flapping in the breeze, I got to ride in a damn Blackhawk. I saw a little bit of that. On Friday. How'd that come about? Uh, the track sent emails. So they usually organize like four or five things for the drivers to do if they want to. Right? They, they, in, they invite you to the per big one on the boulevard you know opportunity they there's something that like golf in or something they just like line up four or five things to do so the track say hey welcome to Talladega here if you got a down day here's some things you could do anytime I see anything with the military I'm like yeah buddy sign me up because one you give those show th those guys appreciation those guys love it when you come out and just chop it up with them but how many times do you get invited to drive flying a Blackhawk not dude often. sick so it was me Eric Jones and Kurt Busch uh, were the ones were the only three out of everybody that got invited to go f do these things. Um, so we're standing there, and these things come in over the treetops like five feet. You know, they land and they divvy us up one per one per helicopter, and they do the little briefing. And you get in, they give you the headset, so you're hearing the chatter and doing all the, all the stuff. And we that thing gets light, right? The tires come off the ground, oh. and it took. It took like 15 seconds for that team to get up and they all take off at the same time, like super organized and we fly over the racetrack. And 
I just had Creedence Clearwater oh, Revival yeah. oh, just yeah. playing in. Some folks born made the way. Is to that play. from Forrest Gump when yeah. the helicopter uh-huh. is that when that song's uh-huh. on? Yeah. yeah, that's that's legitimately what what was playing in my mind the whole time. So I go over the racetrack, and one, I feel like a just a freaking patriot, um, doing nothing but just riding in this helicopter with the doors open. But, um. I realized that there's nothing else in my life that gets my adrenaline pumping because the, I guess my adrenaline is certainly pumping on a Sunday afternoon every weekend, but I don't acknowledge it like that. Yeah. It's just like work, you know, it's just part, like one thing that you is just subconscious. Now you don't realize that your adrenaline's up. You just manage it. And I'm in this, I'm in this bird, like fired up. Yeah. Like, give me a gun. I'm going to shoot some sh- Let's go. So they fly us over, and they call it mapping. So, you know, when you get outside of Talladega, it's pretty hilly, and they got, there's three of these birds, like 10 feet feels like over the trees. And they land right in the middle of a 1,000-meter uh, a yard or 1,000-meter shooting range, and they let us legitimately blow through. So how long of the flight was it? 15 minutes. They brought you right to your shooting range. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and they shot. We shot like the latest and greatest sniper rifle. They had like a little computer on it and would wow. tell you your windage and your yardage and oh, all that. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, I was five for five at thousand meters. So watch out, I'll pick your ass anybody, off. Anybody? Anybody miss? Uh, I think Eric Jones was zero for five, and Kurt was five for five. He was locked in. He might be ready for a comeback. Oh, judging by his sniper skills. Uh, and our buses were parked next together, but that's irrelevant. Um, that was that was. A top five moment in my life. It was really cool. And the, cool. one of the coolest things at the end, you know, you you got to meet a lot of special force guys. Um, you got to work with a lot of cool guys. Just talking a little bit of stories. A lot of guys obviously can't tell you classified information, which a lot of those guys are doing. But at the end, right, you, you get the, the flight back and you land and both uh, – there's the crew chiefs, they call them, which are the ones that sit on the sides and look out like to just kind of scope out where the other birds are. Then there's the two pilots. Um, and just to hear the chatter and the communication between that bird in- internally, but also the other three just to coordinate it all was really neat. And at the end, when we landed, they all ripped off the, their patches on the back of their helmets and handed it to me. Oh, that's cool. So that was pretty neat uh, to be able to do that. And then... We carried on with the racing the rest of that weekend, but I wanted to give you guys and wanted to give those guys a shout out too. Appreciate that, and all of the military men, men and women of this uh, country to allow us to do what we do. So we're gonna take a little break. That was some Talladega for you. We're gonna do some pit road boats and woes right after this. Nice. Join Todd Gordon and myself each week for NASCAR Inside the Race. We'll break down exactly how the race was won. Plus, we'll dive into the data and go in depth on race strategies, penalties, and rule changes. Catch NASCAR Inside the Race presented by Consumer Cellular each Tuesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome back. Pit Road Boats and Woes time. Uh, There was a couple instances where I needed a boat leaving pit road because i drove through some water uh and those good year eagles did not like the weepers that were on the entry and exit of pit road um a couple guys got bit by them myself being one but also the 11 and the 71 as well i don't think we have video of that the 71 hit a weeper sped the first two segments of pit road because he couldn't get her woed down but let's scope out the 11 uh spinning out here this, I don't think he hit water. I think this was just a, oh, oh, pow, pow. Ooh. He hit some water. Um, They're pitted it, right here at the end, too, so it's like, all right, we're going to do four. Yep, so they come down here. Really bumpy. Oh, he did hit some water right there with the right sides. Ooh. Um, it, and your max commit, right? Your max commit on the brake pedal. You're down shifting. You're on the verge of locking rear tires up, so... If your tires hit some water, man, you're you're just a passenger trying to get a woad down. Here we go. Clean air, which is nice. And all of a sudden, you just whoop. He wheel saw chop. spray off of the... Yeah, and you just can't get... Oh, I um, wonder if that had any right front damage on the 11 for the finish of the day. But that's well, tough. Well, put that's more tough on it because they wrecked again. Normally, NASCAR would send the air titans out there during a caution 
to work on it, right, to to give some time, but there was just no natural caution, so they didn't have very much time to just sit there with a the jet dryer and blow the weepers. We had to get the show on the road. Shout out to the 11 team because you know that they were getting ready to just do fuel only there. You can see on his in car that they uh, audible to a four tire jumped right out. You got to be even when you're doing a fuel only, you got to be ready. So good on them. What's our next well, one? We here? know those guys are three three time in a row dogs, so they they're ready for anything. Yeah. See, well, we're taking a look at the 10 card now. We're also looking at these stops here on YouTube if you guys wanted to go check that out. So here, Talladega, super tight pit road. So under caution, everybody's on the lead lap. So when you do four tires, he comes around the 24, mm, and then 19 tough. comes around him. Yeah. And, and you don't have enough in. gear to really dump the clutch and spin you the don't. tires around him. So nope. you're just kind of in a bad spot. He probably didn't stop short enough, but he also wanted to help the 24 out. Well, he, so. he slid the front into the box, which nosed him to the left. Even more than he should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are really large boxes in comparison, though. They're so, they're not, they're they're tight though. They are tight. Um, they're probably only twenty eight foot. I don't know. I didn't get a measuring foot. stick out there this weekend and look at it. I just felt like they weren't very they weren't very small. It depends on who you're around because they does. get small real quick. Was yeah, there anybody does. pitted in front of you or behind yeah, you? Yeah, the twenty one was in front of me, or like towards turn four. Then the eight was was in front of me. Didn't really have any issues. It was cleans in and out all day. Yeah. They feel really nice and really nice and cozy. Yeah. Uh, when when there's no one, when you kind of have the in and outs. But here we got Nick Hensley gas in the 22 team. This is something that a lot of really good gas men have worked on. He's going to plug in. Joey's going to start rolling. Then he puts a line. He has a dead man's line that we call it in the pit box Ooh. that he can't step over. Yep. Because if you're gas, you can't gas that car. Once the front, the front bumper bumper touches that line the exit, that's a penalty. Mm. So you have to unplug. So that's a put one a, lap penalty. Yeah. Right? So they'll put a line like and ride it and watch that line, and then unplug right when they get that line. And then Joey, in turn, like in that situation, he comes in pits, or he comes into the pits, and then he Short. looks in his spot mirror, mm -hmm. and when he sees Nick, Nick knows that Nick's engaged, he starts rolling, mm. and then that's when Nick kind of. Rides it and then we call it, yeah, right, call it riding it out. Riding it out. Um, the times that it gets sketchy is when you do have to angle in or you get have to angle out and you get that sharp turn out. The Schultz yeah. heads tend to get, to get jammed on there, but there is a big difference. That looked like a big fella, too. Nick's, Nick's a normal size guy, he's not one of the biggest guys. He's a, he's a race car guy, he's what, not like, like a six three, he, he's not like a football player. No, no, he's he's a normal, he's fella. a road mechanic. That, yeah, he's like me. Okay. He's a mechanic that uh, is good, really good at gas the last, race cars. The last of a dying breed. Yep, he's uh he's he does all of our pit boxes. He's like in the shop. If there's if you he looks, something if there's he something looks, broke on the pit box, he'll come fix he it. He had nice form. He's, nice one wide of stance. he's one of the best gas men on pit road. Yeah. Won a couple championships for a reason, buddy. Mm -hmm. Won one with Brad in the two car. He's won with uh, two with Joey. He's been around for a long time. And I challenge our listeners here and at on around the track which comes out on wednesdays i do with kim coon to watch for what a good gas and go looks like because it's hard to tell what a good one is uh and what a bad one is if you don't know but if you pay attention like that's a really good one and you can see something that turned really bad real quick so mm -hmm. we didn't see any gas cans drug this week though did nope. we no nope. didn't see any drug no fires on pit road nope so thanks for your guys for fixing the fuel heads <laughs> and uh but my gas man was different this week that's what Kyle Larson put up a tweet. I was, it made me think of you right when I saw it because it was a hilarious tweet. He said, put up this. Morgan Shepard was trying to prove a point to NASCAR at Michigan back in the day. So he got out of his car, pitted it, and then sat on the wall and ate a ham and cheese sandwich <laughs> and then got back in his car and drove away. So Kyle Larson. What what point was he trying to prove? That pictures are too expensive? I don't know what. They I do don't pay you guys too much he money. Was getting at. Oh, yeah, okay. So I agree with Morgan here that. You want to go down this road? No. You want to go? To, you want to go down this road? <laughs> I don't know. You Take it up with Morgan Shepard. He's out there doing it himself. Because you guys should all give your paycheck back. Because you just ran around half throttle all day, <laughs> or at least half. Of want, it. That's where we're going. <laughs> um, so Kyle Larson put up the picture of Morgan pitting his own car and said, "Me today, since half our team has kicked out." He you know, hey, 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 guys, that's me, because you took three out of my five pit crew guys this week. So two of his guys, his Jackman and his rear changer, got suspended. Um, for the wheel coming off in Texas. Yes. The gas man got suspended, I think, for a infraction on some SFI equipment, yeah. which NASCAR's been cracking down. I think it was even just in the Xfinity race. Mm. Um, 
which if you get, I learned this this week at Bowman Gray, if so you get suspended from NASCAR, you get suspended from NASCAR as a whole. Because they were like, hey, if you get suspended here tonight at Bowman Gray, you can't go to Talladega tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, that's not. That's not going to be then good. Then why did I have to buy a separate license to come here and run? Like, let, let's talk about this <laughs> for a second. You didn't read the fine print. Uh, I was like, uh, let's, like, what, what are we talking about here? Um, so that's a that's a bridge I got to cross. But just I, don't fight anybody. Hey, just or if, let's, if get, back, let's get back on the let's get back on the track here. Front stretch. So so they lost Jackman, rear changer, gas man, and then Jesse Saunders, their uh, car chief, got kicked out for an infraction from rolling through tech. So yeah, they had they were missing a lot of their guys. They might and, have been post rolling through tech. Well, anyway, we can call Cliff and ask. Um, I think that's a sensitive t- sensitive subject. Seems like the roof rails is a sensitive area too. It sounds like there must be some juice. There I don't know. I don't know much about it. Um, but yeah, you do. That being said, he says that he didn't have a pit crew. Rolls downhill. Yes, and uh, it rolled right into our camp. And, it, and you are downhill from the five teams, so they take your guys. Three out of my five. Yep, and they they took your your Jackman, Ludwig. Your rear changer and your gas man, which this is a very important gas man race. Yes. Um, Layman. Which in turn, you get Devo guys. Yeah. The guys that don't guys. go to the racetrack every week. Your yeah. guys go to the racetrack every week, compete at a high level. So really, it trickles down to you, and you're the one that kind of, this week I wouldn't say gets boned, but gets the least experienced guys. Yes. My, my guys of my core group are some dogs. They're, they're very good. Um, Stallings, my carrier, said that he, he asked about getting made fun of about celebrating at Texas. Yeah, he had a he, bone to pick with you. Well, he come come, come pick it. He's a big fella. Uh, what are you gonna do? Beat me up? <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, I'm What's 36 years old. What are you gonna beat me up? Yeah, maybe. Hey, man. Depends how he feels about it. I don't even remember what I said. And you just said something about him j- jumping around. Yeah, they were jumping. They were jumping around. Maybe it was, was a great excited. stop. It was the second best stop of the day. It's a great job. Um. But yeah, that that's a good point about how like pickeries where we talk about it a lot, how house car pickeries work and guys that get leased. You know, there's a every team has some sort of ladder system like that, and you know, it's not always what meets the eye, right? People just think Kyle Larson's guys are suspended, but it, it trickles all the way down. Even to this week, the 78 ran, and they had Hendrick guys on that. So then the guys that were probably supposed to be on the 78 were on your car, yeah. And then they have to backfill again, and there's just not that many people, so yeah. you, you're just trying to get. Whoever can just get the wheels on at Talladega. The tough part is you go to Dover next week, which mm. is going to be. Yeah, that's know, what I'm a little concerned about. I would feel really good about our our core group of guys, but unfortunately, we're down three out of five. Dover's a place that's known for you know high load and loose wheels, so. And you got we'll good stops, hard we'll, pass. Yep, and we'll get more into that. Since spare change, we're mm-hmm. doing later on today. Spare change is coming back, so we'll get more into that. Dogs of the week go to the 45 car. If you're if you're celebrate with Michael Jordan on pit road, man, you, you are win are dogs of the week. Dog. So uh, yeah, Mike. Guy who started changing with Houston Stamper. Oh, yeah. Uh, front changer, Wade Moore. Devin Del Rico who used to be on your car. Hendrick, he went over there this year. Nathan Dog. Ricketts, uh, Dog. one half of the Michigan Miserables. And Brian Deal, the dog of the day. Dog of the day. Yep. Oh, yeah, making a new L. El- and when you, when you win. So there's dogs of the week and there's dogs of the day? Well, when you win the race as a gas man at a super speedway. You're the dog of the day. You're the dog of the week and the dog of the day. Mm. So good for them. They punched their way into the playoffs, and they get to celebrate with one of the best athletes of all time. So big day for the sport, big day for those guys, and a really cool paint scheme, and I know that uh, they definitely enjoyed it. So It's not coincidence that a car looks that good and has a victory lane. That's just how it works. Hey. Car looks fast, it's going to go fast. That's and didn't just, have any checkered flags I don't flags make the rules. It. it didn't have checkered flags. Number was on a solid color. Yep. All the things. It was Checked majority white. Boxes. Majority white, and it looked like a killer whale. It wasn't I an orca. Thought, it was a killer whale. I thought it was a Mercedes logo on the side of the car, like at first glance. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was Jumpman. It was we'll go circle man. around it. Um, I wonder if he gets like, you know, Kurt's got the great story about the signed rookie card after his first one. I wonder, what, like, if Tyler, let's get him in the studio and talk about his MJ experience so far. Dude, yeah, I it was so cool to see MJ holding Bo um spend some time with uh Tyler and his fiance this uh winter at our buddy Greg's wet um wedding and then again at the banquet and they just talked about how, you know, how welcoming Michael's been and 
you know, they have a really good relationship with him. So it would be cool to have Tyler come in here. We need to get him in here and, and uh, talk about his experience so far. And, man, he's done a great job in that 45. Yeah. 23-11. Uh, <clears throat> punt keeps just hammering him out. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, good for them. That's I mean, I'm, I'm stoked for them. Hey, don't like don't like getting beat, but it's good to see a new team. Like, yeah. it's good to see that new teams can come in and be successful, right? Yeah. Because it's it's definitely an uphill battle. And MJ talked about that in his post race. He just said, you know, this this replaces. He said, I'm all in, and this replaces that competitive, uh, you know, the competitive juices that need to be flowing. And he said, but this is way worse because I have no control. Yeah. He said, like, at least basketball, I had total control. I'd make it happen. Here, he said, I live vicariously through His the guy. crew chiefs, the drivers, the crew guys. Mm. And, uh, man, he he was fired up. He said that Denny had um, been saying he was bad luck. And it turns out, uh, I listened to a little bit of Denny's podcast on the way in this morning. It turns out Denny was leaving the track. Um, but really? They, yeah, they didn't know who won because he was he, his gears were really ground about the uh, – the scoring wreck. pylon. Oh, his gears were going oh, about he that? Was like, he's like, I couldn't even tell who won because there's no scoring pylon and I got no service on my phone so I can't check my phone. Like he was getting, he was just going. I don't like that. That really it. grinds my gears too. If we want to jump forward, I don't get it. I don't like it. Teams, instead of tearing these pylons down, need to be spending more money and making up-to-date pylons like Daytona. I, I will die on that. Hit. I'll say this. I genuinely don't get too emotional about stuff like that. Like I feel like there's enough people in racing that just fly off the cuff whenever something small changes but i'll say this from a from a objective point of view there was three times yesterday i looked at the pile looked for the pylon to figure out what was going on it wasn't and there. it wasn't there and i was like okay that's inconvenient that's all that's all i have to say about it i don't like it yeah i i think it's a little bit um i was wondering this is it a little bit iconic to like ha that, is that like yes. one of our things to have a scoring pile yes. on there because like, I think so like I think when you go I mean Richmond's I love, got a cool one Daytona's. I love when you go to short tracks and they have a cool pile on yes. you know and, and I don't know that that's or even it's a, a trend I don't like, love but I like I don't want to have an opinion on it I'll just say like I said bring back pylons looked for it a couple times yesterday it wasn't there we need pylons I like the one at Wilkesboro it's old school looking but yeah. it's LED yeah yeah, I did the same thing at Texas last week. I went to look for it, and I was like, oh, it's not, where the hell are we running? You, you just don't know. No. Sometimes you can't see the big hoss. So, you know, if your pit box is But there's also not spot. a there's not a 36-car rundown on the big hoss. There's only, like, top five. Yeah, that's, that's I don't tough. Like. Um, bring back pylons. I will say the app is better than it's ever been, but it's still, you know, you have to look down at your phone. If you're watching, it's it's harder to check off on. Um but man, I do like, I do like the NASCAR app. But I don't I like know the little I, stories. I don't know that I'd like it. I don't know that I'd like it in race. Like no. they want to use it. No, well, sometimes service isn't great or whatever. Um, but you know what is great is the paper thoughts question this week. Pretty good. I'm Ryan Flores. Join Kim Kuhn and myself each and every week at Around the Track. We'll get you ready for the upcoming race weekends from short tracks to the Cup Series, whether you'll be attending in person or watching from home. Coming your way each week is the best bets to win some easy money and driver suggestions to help pump up your fantasy lineups. Around the Track also tells you what to watch for in the NASCAR Regional Series and which young phenom drivers to keep your eye on. Plus, our At Traction segment gives you all the fan activities, concerts, and tailgating fun at the track. Be sure to check out Around the Track each and every Wednesday on NASCAR's YouTube channel. We had a couple penny for your thoughts questions. First one comes from Higgy. Oh. Right here, in studio. What's it like to step out of a race car and immediately get into a street car and drive? Is there any temptation to drive fast? I get this question quite a bit, <clears throat> and the answer is actually opposite of what you'd expect. So when you're when you're in the car, particularly like Talladega or Daytona, your peripheral vision just gets accustomed to going 200 miles an hour. So you don't like see trees or fans or anything else. And you're just kind of like looking, you know, in your general field of vision. But when you get, and then you get, your brain gets caught up to the speed of going 190. And that's just like normal speed. But when you get out, and most of the time when I'm getting, you know, you go somewhere fast like Atlanta or Michigan, 
then you get into the car and you drive to the airport, it feels like I'm going faster because now my peripheral vision is picking up trees and signs and houses. And I feel like going 60 miles an hour is faster than going 200 miles an hour. Wow. Yes. Until yeah, you hit something. Uh, and then you realize how fast you're going. This That stuff sucks. You did that. I did Check that. that box. Yeah. I figured I was due for a good, good big wreck. You know, knock on wood. Well, but like, I've been, out of the way. I've been doing this long enough uh, to where I hadn't had a really large one. Nor flip. That was my first ever flip. The biggest one you've had is with Newman Wreck at Daytona. Yeah, but I launched him into outer space. I stayed on the ground. Can we tell? Can I tell a story about that? Yes. There's a there's a famous picture of you that looks like you got out of the car and you're hang sitting on. next to the car praying. H- hang on, hang on. Do you so, want to tell you what was really going on there? Yeah. So, um. <clears throat> Daytona 500 pays 5x more than everything else. So you are fully in the fuel coming to the line. So I'm running like seventh. I see the six get turned broadside, and then it was just smoke, and I just kept it in the wood. And next thing I know, he was upside down, and I was underneath of him. The windshield smashed down, but the second I hit him, it was like the rock had a full running start and kicked me square in the balls. Yeah. So it knocked the wind out of me. My testicles were in my throat. Everybody uh, thought and, that hang Newman on. was hurt. Yes. Everybody, yes, because it, right, it was a massive, massive crash. Meanwhile, it knocks the throttle body off my car. My stuff's on fire. So I get out, and I take like two steps, and I'm like, I'm about to throw up. So you're kneeling I'm next on my, to your car. I look, I look up at the, I look up at the uh, scoring pile, and I'm like, oh, eighth. Yes, that's going to be a nice little payday. And I'm like, oh, God. And i like... I was praying. I was like, "Oh God, this hurts real bad." Oh God! But everybody thought that you. And there were was this picture zoomed Newman. out from somebody in the in the grandstands, and people people were like, "Oh, look at look at how look at how thoughtful Corey is." It's he a, gets a out, powerful picture. Powerful picture. He is praying for his fellow competitor. Yeah, and it went like viral. Uh, he's on Facebook getting thousands of retweets, and I let it go for multiple days because. Yo, why would I impede this process? Multiple days. I mean, however many days there was between then and here, now, this is where the No, I said something. Oh, I've you? said, I've <laughs> talked about this a couple other times, but yes, uh, I did say, no, I wasn't praying for Newman in the moment. I was really just, I got kicked in the balls real bad. Yeah, my nuts hurt. Um, but I appreciate y'all thinking that I, you know, I really had the wherewithal to pray for a fellow competitor at that moment, but I did not. Um, Next question. I digress. <laughs> CW photo, CW underscore photo. What is the best thing you saw on the boulevard this weekend? Uh, we generally stayed away from the boulevard this weekend, but we did take, um, I jumped on the golf cart after the Xfinity race, and we were just kind of cruising around, killed some time with the kiddos. And generally speaking, between the hours of like noon and five o'clock, the boulevard is like your regular old campground, except for some props here or there. So we were cruising around, and the fans are still trickling in from the grandstands of the Xfinity race and all that. So we took just a little zip through the boulevard, grab a couple cases of uh, – they are passing out liquid death. Uh, big You're the only that guy that goes to the boulevard and gets cases of water, by the way. No, no, that was the iced tea stuff. Okay. Uh, so got two cases of that. And then I'm cruising down, right, and, and Levi's driving the golf cart, and I'm working the pedals. and It was fairly tame. Everybody's getting ready, you know. They got concert stages set up, and they got all this stuff, and they got music blasting, and it was fairly lively. Um, and then we just happened to see a mannequin with a hammer on it, with an American <laughs> flag, and Kelly was like, "Drive, drive, drive, drive!" Exposing our kids, to this oh, vile things. That um, was Dega. It was Dega. So that was actually probably the least. That was the least bad thing that there is to see out there. It's a little prop. You know, people have some jokes. Um, just an American hammer out there swaying in the breeze. It's like going to Alaska, get mad, you see snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's there, man? Yeah. Can't get pissed off about it. Uh, seemed like a lot of people had a good time. We just, uh, we were in the bus when darkness uh, The Arctic uh, cooler. Made an appearance with Noah driving it. Yeah, so you made, you built an Arctic cooler. Uh, drift trike. Drift trike, yes. Yeah, so that was cool. Arctic had a big setup this weekend, activation outside. The, uh, they've been a partner, obviously, the show and myself for, for this year and last. Uh, and they wanted t- to do like a bar stool uh, racer. And I was like, you know, a better idea. I've got a, I've got a drift trike that we can just repurpose into a 
cooler trike. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but made it uh, a 72 volt motor. Everything lived inside the cooler. It was ended up being really trick. Uh, and then Noah drove that thing around the boulevard for the parade. Did he tear it up? Uh, the the axle came back a bit more bent than what it had left at. Hmm. I didn't ask questions because I'm just glad it got some it got some use. But um, I think he every video I saw of him driving it, he was on the throttle. Which oh, rightfully yeah. so. He he hey. he's driving like he's like he stole it. Race car driver. Um, yeah, we tend to hit some things, name some stuff. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, any other questions? What we got? No, uh, now we'll move on to Penny Stacker of the Week. Any Penny there Stackers? Lots. Yeah, there's. I mean, I think I would give an honorary Penny Stacker to the to the Blackhawk pilots, uh, but there was also a um, lot of people at the Arctic display did an appearance there on on Saturday um, before the before the uh, Stacking Pennies Live show with Daniel Hemrick, which was a good time. Um, some girl named Corey, she made uh, custom overalls with NASCAR and Talladega. And Did she get a pair? Seven, uh, I, no, it wasn't my size. It was a little bigger than she was. Um, she had a seven uh, on the back patch, and I signed her uh, I signed her overalls. So I, I think she went through she went through a lot of effort to make those overalls. So I, I believe Corey is the penny stacker of the week. I saw um, C O R I, I believe is how she spoke. I saw some uh, people before the race there behind our pit box. I, for, I didn't get their name, but it was a, a family, two kids. We signed. They had penny uh, stacking penny shirts on. Signed signed their shirts and got to talk to them for a little bit, and then had a couple people at Bowman Gray, especially Dave, uh, who works on yeah Corey Turner. Yeah, it was the penny stacker of the week. Good job, Corey. There's lots of them though. Um, it was really cool. It was really cool to uh, to see everybody out in Talladega. Also, everybody when I got out of the car cheered. Um, that was pretty cool. Well, yeah. Hey, he's not dead. This he's is not great. dead. <sighs> so I gave him a little wave. Appreciate that. Listen to the show this week. Listen to my experience, um, and keep it moving. Yeah, you, you, I was trying to give some old buddy from Bert, from Jason Myers crew a shout out. And you interrupted me. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Shout out to him. You know what? You know I know he's a real one? How? Because he said, man, Boats and Woe is the best part of the show. I said, amen, brother. Yeah, so, yeah. and then, so uh, there. And then, yeah, we had a bunch yeah. of people. And then uh, Justin from China Grove came up, gave me a penny. He was oh, with yeah. his family as well. So, yeah, a lot of a lot of penny stackers out and about this weekend. It was good to see everybody. Mm-hmm. Appreciate y'all's support no matter where you listen. But I would recommend going to check us out on YouTube as well. Because uh, they do a great job with social with the clips uh, and all the in-car cameras that nobody else can get except for here on Stacking Pennies. I didn't get to watch much of the Xfinity or Arca race. How are they this weekend? Dude, the Xfinity race is exciting to watch because those guys have so many options uh, to, to manipulate the air, to formulate runs. The cars handle bad because they're on narrow tires. You can put guys in bad spots. So the, the, the pack drivers is, aren't the drivers and the aren't I'm harping driving on this, 40 percent. No, the throw. drivers and the people working on them are not nearly as good. So they don't have as good of a game plan. So yeah. people actually make mistakes yes. where you guys don't make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, the pack isn't as isn't as tight, which visually doesn't look probably as exciting. It doesn't look like a pace lap like we saw for the last 390 miles of our race. Um, that's that's one element, right? The cars don't drive quite as good. Uh, the RCR cars are so much faster than everybody else. Love it. And they also can hold apparently three more gallons of fuel than everybody else. Smoking Jesse units Love, working on that thing uh, up yeah. there. Check the fuel line of that thing because Jesse Love went like six. He went like 18 miles past a, a normal fuel. Hey, run. when your car's fast, it's easier to save fuel, I guess. I guess. guess. Uh, first career dub for Jesse Love. He's been knocking on the door all year in that two car. Pretty cool to see. And he's a solid dude, man. He's a good guy. I talked to him this past week. Yeah, we spent um, over some NASCAR. Time. He was yeah. good. He was a good guy. Uh, how about so that that one had a bunch of precautions, a bunch of green white checkers, but the Arca race went green. Yeah, um, I figured Jesus was gonna be coming back on Friday afternoon. The only or Saturday highlight afternoon. I saw was my indoor rival Andy J being a weirdo and eating a banana mid race. Yeah, there's also there's a lot of other snacks that are easier to eat in, in a race car than a full banana. With he's peel a, on it. he's like a from what I have gathered racing against him for a decade now. He won't drink bottled water out of out of plastic, like, and he eats like super healthy. So, but he delivers it's, pizza. But like, dudes, imagine trying to peel a banana with your gloves on. 
Yeah. And then you got like banana residue on your fingers for the rest of the day. There's got to be a better option. Yeah. Like they make any, they make a lot of things that you can eat as, and also it's an ARCA race. It's 45 minutes. How much refreshment and nutrition do you Dude. need for that? Yeah, man. <laughs> but hey, maybe he was hungry. <laughs> Like he was He's like get, he knew, what I know about Andy. He, he knew, knew he had in-car camera. In-car camera and he was going to get on TV some way somehow. It would have only been better if he threw that thing out and um spun somebody out behind did, him. Yeah, did the like Mario Kart or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but shout out to if uh a shout out to those guys. Yeah, uh, what's, Green James, what's James Finch's boy's name? Jake, Jake Finch. Finch. Yeah. Shout out to Jake. He uh-huh. was uh he was in the Hunt Daytona 2 in the Narca race and got wrecked I think by a teammate. Uh, so it's cool to see him in victory lane. He's watched him grow up through the super late model ranks. Yeah, and yeah he wheels. Um, yeah, that was wild. The Arca guys, they must have heard the podcast from Daytona. A lot of bent feelings about that, but they proved us wrong. They went green to checkered. Um, yeah. Quality, quality competition there. Awesome. Love good, to see it. Good on them and uh, – See see what goes down at Dover this week. Mm, love rolling into the monster. Couldn't go couldn't go much um, on different sides of the spectrum of driving forty percent at Talladega saving throttle with not much being asked of you in terms of driving the car to rifling it off at one hundred and eighty miles an hour into the banking there and driving our for all she's worth. Um, Dover is one of my favorite places we race. It's going to be really fun and uh, got a little monster in the in the front garage there from back in my old days so it's always good when you know where victory lane's at we generally run pretty good with our seven camaro um just need to keep clicking them off here couple get a couple get a couple good runs under the belt it's been a tough little stretch and uh i don't know not try to keep all four tires on the ground this week would be good yeah make sure you join us for uh, some spare change later on in the week and you like share rate review watch on youtube Follow Stack and Pennies on Instagram. Yeah. All the good stuff. If you guys aren't watching on YouTube on Wednesday, it comes out on Wednesdays. You're missing out. Higgy and Cam do a great job uh, cutting out clips. They even dug dug up some old modified racing from Corey mm-hmm. back in the day last week. So it really I'm sure they'll puts be a digging up with the name. I'm sure they'll dig up the clip of you ripping that poor guy's carburetor off too, Bummer Gray. Yeah, man. Um, you know we saw what you did on the last lap, right? Don't shit, don't throw shade here. Oh, mine was impressive. Yours is pretty good too. I just kept going. So did I, all the way to the start finish line. Yeah, we both finished. Yeah, and then just, I got, then I still I got had 120 laps to go. and went on home. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's it, guys. Enough penny stacks for the day. Well, y'all have a great week. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Goodbye.